An ex-cult member battles haunting memories as she reintegrates into society and reconnects with her sister. After spending two years as a cult member in the Catskill Mountains, Martha, a 22-year-old woman, makes a life-changing decision and finally escapes into the woods. Her fellow cult members give chase, but fortunately, she manages to elude them by finding a hiding place. Once the escapee determines it's safe, she walks to a nearby town and eats at a diner restaurant. However, Watts, another cult member, suddenly arrives and confronts her, attempting to persuade her to return to the cult. When she firmly declines his request, he stops insisting. Instead, he lets her go and tenderly kisses her on the forehead, advising her to take care of herself. Shortly after, a traumatized Martha calls her estranged sister, Lucy, who promptly comes to pick her up. She then drives her to their vacation lake house in Connecticut, which she shares with her wealthy architect husband, Ted. Upon reaching their destination, the exhausted cult survivor takes a bath and then lies in bed while still wrapped in her towel. When Ted arrives the following day, Lucy informs him that Martha has been staying with a boyfriend in the Catskill Mountains, which immediately alarms him. However, she reassures her husband that her sister is finally safe with them. During breakfast, the architect warmly greets his sister-in-law, whom he meets for the first time. While eating, Lucy observes that her sibling seems dissatisfied with the food, prompting her to suggest preparing something else for her later. Later, as Martha and Lucy sunbathe by the lake, the former inquires about how far they are from the Catskills. When the ex-cultist learns they are only three hours away from the place, she slightly worries for her safety. Suddenly, she flashes back to when her friend Zoe recruited her into the cult two years ago. There, she met the charismatic leader named Patrick, who granted her the name Marcy May. As she snaps back to reality, Martha invites Lucy to swim. Upon her sister's refusal, she suddenly undresses on the lake bridge before skinny dipping. Disturbed by the strange behavior, the architect's wife immediately scolds her sibling, wrapping her in a towel. While lying in bed that night, Martha recalls her life in the cult. As a new member, she noticed the cult's black SUV driving off late at night. Curious about where it was going, she asked Max, her fellow cultist, where the other members went. However, he was just as clueless as her. In the following days, Martha began to adapt to the cult's ways. A cult member banged the saucepan loudly to awaken them, start their day, and do their roles. As she washed the dishes, the matriarch, Katie, informed her that everyone took turns doing different jobs each day to learn a variety of tasks. When the middle-aged devotee asked her if she could knit, the recruit promised to learn as she was committed to contributing to her new community. The matron then shared that the cult made money by selling blankets in town, but their goal was to be self-sufficient once their farm was running. As Martha gathered with the other members, Patrick approached and promised that the group would help her. However, he emphasized that becoming part of them would involve actively participating in their activities. In the present time, Lucy returns with groceries and greets her sister, who suddenly sits atop the kitchen counter. After calling out her inappropriate behavior, she hands her a fruit drink, hoping it will make her feel better. Later, as the couple and Martha enjoy a boat ride, the ex-cultist learns that their aunt Dora, who previously lived with her after their mother's passing, attended her older sibling's wedding. To update their aunt about her sister's current state, Lucy takes a photo of her and hands her the Polaroid, mentioning there's no need to shake it as it's just a myth. Out of nowhere, the cult survivor asks whether married couples abstain from engaging in intimate acts, causing her concerned sibling to deny the claim firmly. Afterward, Martha and the couple gather around the table for dinner. As they enjoy their meal, the former devotee bursts into laughter for the first time because of a playful comment from her brother-in-law about Lucy's dry cooking. As Ted embraces his wife that night, he observes Martha's notable improvement in her overall well-being. However, Lucy hesitates about attending a doctor's appointment the next day, as she is reluctant to leave her sibling alone. To reassure his wife, the architect promises to treat his sister-in-law kindly while she is away. Meanwhile, the traumatized cult escapee begins to recollect more disturbing memories. Following that traumatizing experience, Katie offered a twisted comfort, asserting that what had happened to her was a good experience and that other girls in the cult had undergone the same. As Martha lay in bed, visibly tormented, Zoe expressed her belief that Martha was fortunate to have had the experience, even saying that she would give anything to relive her first time. Despite the recruit's evident pain and inability to remember what happened, her friend offered reassurance, stating that it was a good sign. She then explained that the failure to recall the event indicated a successful process of cleansing oneself from the past. One day, the cult members gathered outside the house to watch Max's guitar performance. When it was Patrick's turn, he sang Marcy's song, starting with the lyrics, Well, she's just a picture who lives on my wall. This particular line mirrored the demise of Martha's past self and her transformation as a devotee. 
In the present moment, as the cult SKP cleans the kitchen floor, Ted offers to teach her how to operate a boat, an invitation she accepts. After bonding, the architect opens up about Lucy's visit to the doctor, as they are actively trying to conceive a baby. In response, Martha laughs, expressing her disbelief that her sister can care for a newborn. Shortly after, Ted shares that Martha's two-year absence caused his wife great worry. This information surprised the ex-cultist, as she believed her older sister did not think about her. Suddenly, Martha rises, undresses, and prepares to plunge into the water for a swim. As she immerses herself in the refreshing depths, she recalls Cliff jumping and engaging in a carefree skinny dipping experience with her former cult companions. In another memory, she lay beside a slumbering Patrick, finding solace and comfort in his embrace as she drifted off into sleep, only for him to take advantage of her the following morning. In the present day, Martha awakens because of the strange noises. Scared, she heads to the couple's room and lies on their bed while they spend intimate time. When the couple's intimate moment is interrupted, Lucy confronts her sister about her weird behavior. The cult survivor, in response, explains that she struggles with sleeping alone and highlights that they have a large bed, implying it could accommodate her. After considering her sister's explanation, the architect's wife firmly emphasizes that it is not appropriate or customary to intrude upon a couple's intimate moment. As Martha apologizes, a concerned Lucy decides to let her siblings sleep in their bed, leading to an angry Ted storming out of the room in frustration. The following day, Lucy apologizes to an exhausted Ted, who had to sleep on the couch due to Martha's presence in their bed. As the architect expresses his desire to avoid additional stress, Lucy explains that she is Martha's only family. However, he remarks that his sister-in-law's behavior is irrational, unaware she can hear his comment from the other room. Later that day, Martha impresses Lucy with her gardening skills, which she acquired during her time in the cult. While bonding over the plants, the latter takes the opportunity to ask her sister if her boyfriend has ever been physically cruel towards her, as she noticed a bruised ear and she seemed hysterical during their phone conversation. However, the cult survivor denies having a ruthless boyfriend and clarifies that she left him because he was a liar. Back to the time when Martha was gardening with her fellow cult members, the black SUV arrived, carrying Watts and a recruit named Sarah, who Patrick later codenamed Sally. As Martha showed the newbie around the house, she explained that their mealtime was in the evenings. Introducing her to the cult leader and Katie's baby, Martha reassured the recruit that she would soon find her role, just like the matriarch told her when she was new. Later, Zoe opened up to Martha and Sarah, disclosing that Patrick had instructed her to contact her father and request money. During their conversation, as Zoe explained that her father had mistakenly assumed she needed money for illicit medications, Sarah revealed that she had experimented with different substances. When the senior member asked if she had ever consumed alcohol, the newbie admitted to trying it. In response, Zoe praises her, explaining that the cult had strict rules against drinking due to its impact on focus and concentration. That night, under Katie's supervision, Martha crushed a tablet and discreetly added it to Sarah's drink. As the robed recruit eagerly awaited her initiation, the senior cultist handed her the herbal smoothie, claiming that it would initiate the cleansing process. Subsequently, she led the recruit to the room where Patrick would take advantage of her. At present, Martha wakes up on the floor, realizing she has wet her dress. Feeling embarrassed, she quickly removes and hides the clothing under the mattress. Later, Lucy and Martha engage in a conversation about their sudden disconnection. The former expresses her concern and wonders if she could have been more present for her sibling. However, the latter only dismisses her concerns, stating that the past is irrelevant and that she has taken care of herself. Despite Lucy's regrets about not being more involved in Martha's life, particularly regarding her education, her sister asserts that she is a teacher and a leader. She also expresses that in the past, Lucy never allowed her to be her true self and pursue her aspirations. Confused by her sister's statement, Lucy argues that she has always encouraged her to strive for more, but feels that she constantly shuts her down. Before they can delve deeper into the conversation, they are interrupted by Ted, who calls them for dinner. While enjoying their meal, Ted suggests that Martha should have career plans, emphasizing the importance of financial stability as an adult. However, the ex-cultist argues that there are alternative ways to live a fulfilling life that doesn't revolve solely around money and material possessions. Triggered by her response, an angry Ted confronts his sister-in-law, accusing her of being hypocritical for lecturing him about life when she doesn't seem to have a clear set of values. After the heated argument, Martha angrily leaves the dining room and later tries to reach out to Zoe from the cult. However, when the person on the other end of the line identifies herself as Marlene Lewis and calls her Marcy, the ex-cultist quickly hangs up. Startled by the encounter, she hastily disconnects the phone when it rings again. 
As Martha progressed within the cult, Patrick taught her how to use a handgun and tasked her to euthanize a terminally ill cat. Noticing Martha's hesitation, the cult leader encouraged her by emphasizing her role as a teacher and a leader, pushing her to prove herself by shooting the cat. However, Max intervened and took over, ending one of the cats instead. That night, Martha, Watts, and Zoe infiltrated a luxurious house to steal valuable household items. It became clear that the cult's primary source of income involved burglary, contradicting Katie's earlier claim that they made money by selling blankets. In the present time, the ex-cultist becomes alarmed by the sound of a car arriving and someone getting out of it during the night. Intrigued and on high alert, she cautiously peers out the window and notices a black SUV parked outside, which raises her suspicion that it might belong to her former cult. The following morning, an anxious Martha gets a stone and smashes the black vehicle's window. That night, while curled up in bed, she struggles to sleep as she hears loud thuds outside the house. While cleaning the window the following day, the former devotee becomes increasingly paranoid as she hears the phone ringing, thinking it could be one of the cultists trying to reach her. Later that day, Lucy and Ted host a lively house party, inviting many friends from the city. Meanwhile, a dressed-up Martha nervously surveys the guests. Spotting the bartender, Mike, she approaches him and quietly requests a drink. However, just as he is about to hand her the drink, the paranoid ex-devotee's heightened paranoia takes over, leading her to explosively shatter the glass and lash out at the bartender, accusing him of being one of her former cult members. Afterward, overwhelmed by her emotions, the distressed woman retreats to the house in despair. She breaks down and pleads with Lucy and Ted, insisting they must all leave immediately. Concerned for her well-being, the couple guides her to a room and sedates her to calm her down. During her involvement with the cult, Martha took part in another burglary. However, things took a dark turn when the homeowner caught them. As the man ordered them to get out, Katie repeatedly stabbed him from behind. Shortly after, the burglars quickly fled the scene. As a result of witnessing the murderous act, a traumatized Martha found herself lying in bed, overwhelmed with distress. Patrick entered the room to comfort her and shared his twisted view of morality. He believed that dying was beautiful because it instilled fear in humans. The cult leader added that fear was a powerful emotion that brought heightened awareness and pure love. He then concluded that the homeowner's demise was an expression of pure love, a disturbing idea that intensified Martha's skepticism of her cult's ways. When someone named Jane called and looked for Watts, Martha answered the phone and introduced herself as Marlene Lewis. There were instructions on how the members should answer calls on the wall. They should only ask three questions and identify themselves as Marlene if they were female or Marshall if they were male. This practice implied identity removal in the cult. Later, as Katie and Martha prepared food for their members, the latter secretly ate a piece, prompting the matriarch to hit her. She then reminds her not to eat until their other cultists have finished their meals. When she apologizes to Katie, the ex-devotee snaps back to reality in the kitchen, where Lucy asks her who Katie is. Sensing her sister's disorientation, she instructs her to sit down and relax. After Marsha leaves, Ted approaches his wife, suggesting she sends her mentally unstable sister to a psychiatric hospital for proper care. When Martha was still distressed about her cult's heinous act, she told Zoe that she couldn't stop thinking about the homeowner. However, her friend explained that he still existed in a parallel time. Unbeknownst to them, Watts heard their conversation and reported it to Patrick. As a result, Patrick confronted the distressed member, forcing her to get over what they had done. He gaslighted her and questioned her loyalty, prompting the guilty follower to apologize. As he embraced her, he reassured her that she was his favorite. As the cult leader places his hand on her upper thigh, Martha awakens in the present moment upon Ted's touch, causing her to panic. As she frantically runs upstairs, her brother-in-law runs after her. Mistaking him for Patrick, she shockingly kicks the architect down the stairs. When Lucy witnesses this erratic behavior, she immediately confronts her sister, who admits she thought her brother-in-law was someone else. However, as she asks what happened to her, a tearful Martha still doesn't disclose that she was in a cult when she disappeared for two years. To get her younger sister proper help, she firmly decides to send her to psychiatric care despite her reluctance. After her sibling comments that she'll be a terrible mother, Lucy breaks down and asks Martha if she still has some money left. After her sister responds that she has none, she calmly assures her that everything will be taken care of. The following day, before Martha heads out to swim, she reconciles with Lucy, who informs her of her appointment at the hospital. Her sister then tells her to prepare as they will travel to the city soon. While swimming in the lake, the ex-devotee sees a mysterious man sitting on a nearby rock, watching her. Suspecting that he's a cult member, she frantically swims back to the bridge and returns to the lake house. Later, en route to the hospital with the couple, Martha stays in the back seat. 
Suddenly, Ted slams on the brakes upon seeing a man on the road, who rushes back to the vehicle parked behind them. As the architect accelerates and drives away, the other car follows them, causing the ex-cultist to glance back anxiously and silently panic. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.